perhaps you talk a little bit about the reactions to some of your more recent work you put on um, telephone and email telepathy. I believe you've got some new experiments running at the moment as yes, well. Yes, I've got some new ones running on the internet at the moment. Um, well, I mean, there's a fairly predictable set of responses to this. I mean, these are taboo topics, anything to do with telepathy, anything that suggests the mind is more than just the brain. And this came into focus um, in 2006 when I gave a, a talk along with Peter at the uh, British Association for the Advancement of Science Annual Festival of Science. Organised by the network. Organised by mm -hmm. the network. And the, at the press conference in the morning, there was, it was clear that this was attracting much more attention from the media than most of the other worthy talks, some of which one could say were rather dull as part of the conference. Yes. Um, and this, the attention that this generated, Peter talking about near death and nearing death experiences, my work on telephone telepathy, Deborah Delanoy's talk on reviewing work in parapsychology, um, generated a great deal of interest and precisely because of that it led to a backlash and some science journalists who themselves are committed to a very mechanistic dogmatically materialist point of view, fanned up a controversy by interviewing uh, people they knew were against these things to say it was all rubbish and then they attacked the British Association for allowing these topics to be discussed. Um, and this was all over the Times and a number of papers. Uh, it was a row really stirred up by journalists. And, but the fact is it dominated the press coverage of the entire British Association Festival of Science. Indeed, and yes. the reason for that is because, precisely because it's controversial, um, precisely because a lot of people are interested in these things, um, but also because a taboo had been violated on what they thought of as the kind of sacred ground of the British Associ Association. Interestingly enough, although the Times ran two pages denouncing telepathy in the British Association uh, on its science pages, um, the uh, assistant editor rang me up and, uh, and, they, and asked me to do a, a thousand word feature for their opinion pages, putting my point of view. They also had an editorial the very same day as this denunciation in the science pages, say, what's all the fuss about? Everybody knows telepathy happens. Yes. So <laughs> yes. The point is, as soon as mm. you move outside the narrow world of science into the more general society, then most people take it for granted. So we have here, in the larger context, a small, embattled subculture uh, within the world of science to which most intellectuals feel they have to pay at least lip service. Yes. Because this is the Enlightenment, scientific, rational, as they see it, point of view. And the, the Peter, people like Peter and me are not saying we're against reason and science. On the contrary, we're saying we're in favour of reason and science and that we need more of it, not less. We just need to expand Precisely. the frontiers of science rather than turning science into a kind of fundamentalist, dogmatic belief system. It's a system of inquiry, not a system of, of um, you know, setting limits to what you can talk about. Indeed. Um, and, and I absolutely agree with you, Rupert. And I was heartened by the time because I was also given the opportunity to, to have uh, a feature in the Times, which I, which I thought was really very nice. Mm. And it, clearly, the editors felt that <laughs> this was the, the scientific establishment striking at something which wasn't there at all. Mm. And if the scientific journalists now took the trouble to go along to a lot of the more uh, advanced meetings, even in the Royal Society itself, they would see that things have changed completely. There's a very nice uh, talk given there by Schwartz looking at um, the, uh, the mathematics of von Neumann and the idea that uh, the von Neumann, what's called von Neumann II process, which is one in which the um, quantum mechanical effects occur in large objects um, uh, can take place and was written up in the proceedings of the Royal Society and the argument that the authors ended with was that um, uh, it's quite clear that consciousness is now outside the brain and that mental effect affect the brain and you were beginning to talk a little bit about telepathy between two people and how telepathy continued um, with the relationship at a distance and this is exactly what they were saying 
And one of the lovely experiments is such a simple one, uh, and we've known it for years, and this is the placebo experiment. Give somebody a piece of chalk and tell them it is the most fantastic dopamine agonist, particularly if you have Parkinson's uh, chemical, and then measure the way the dopamine receptors change in the brain. Uh, and you show that the dopamine goes up and it's much more powerful than some of the dopamine agonist drugs. Mm -hmm. Now that is pure uh, embedding in the cultural context. Mm -hmm. And once you get that sort of data coming through, you cannot argue anymore for just the, the play of neurons. It's got mm -hmm. to be something much wider.